Every day in the church year has a saint day, but the solemnity of all saints is when the church honors all saints known and unknown. While we have information about many saints and we honor them on specific days, there are many unknown or unsung saints who may have been forgotten or never been honored specifically. On All Saints Day, we celebrate these holy men and women and ask for their prayers and intercessions. The whole concept of All Saints Day is tied in with the communion of saints. This is the belief that all of God's people on heaven, earth, and in the state of purification are connected in a communion. In other words, Catholic and Orthodox Christians believe that the saints of God are just as alive as you and I and are constantly interceding on our behalf. Remember, our connection with the saints in heaven is one grounded in a tight-knit communion. The saints are not divine, nor omnipresent, nor omniscient. However, because of our common communion with and through Jesus Christ, our prayers are joined with the heavenly community of Christians. Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, AD 350, testifies to this belief. We mention those who have fallen asleep, first the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, that through their prayers and supplications, God would receive our petition. He goes on with, being more closely united to Christ, those who dwell in heaven fix the whole church more firmly in the holiness. They do not cease to intercede with the Father for us. So by their fraternal concerns, our weakness is greatly helped. This is the reading for November 1st, 2020. The first lesson comes from Revelation 7, chapter 
verses um, 9 through 17. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God, who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. They sang, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the 24 elders asked me, Who are these who are clothed in white? Where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are the ones who died in the great tribulation, and they have washed their clothes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. That is why they stand in front of God's throne and serve him day and night in his temple. And he also sits on the throne, and he who sits on the throne will give them shelter. They will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. For the lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The reading from the psalm is Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praises in the assembly of the faithful. O Israel, rejoice in your maker. O people of Jerusalem, exalt in your king. Praise his name with dancing, accompanied by tambourine and harp. For the Lord delights in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let the faithful rejoice that he honors them. Let them sing for joy as they lie on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their mouths and a sharp sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains, to execute the judgment written against them. This is the glorious privilege of his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. The second lesson comes from 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. See how very much our fathers love us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Glory to you, O Lord. This reading is about the Beatitudes, which you've heard of before. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, 
for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when, when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All Saints Day. What does that mean? Well, it means that this is a day in which we celebrate the saints, but who are the saints? Well, the saints are everybody. Everybody who believes in Jesus Christ. There are saints that are in heaven. There are saints that are here on earth. One of the things that we study today is from Revelation. And I just want to read the first part here. And it says, this is uh, John speaking. After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe, the people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands, and they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. The Lamb in this case is of course our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's one reading from today. There's another reading which we just did too, and it's from our Gospel reading. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. This, then he goes into the Beatitudes. What I, the point I'm trying to make here is that there's two crowds that are talking to Jesus. Jesus as being the Lamb, and Jesus as being the Lord. The one from Revelation is the crowds that are in heaven. The one from on the mountaintop are the crowds that are from earth. What are the differences? Well, the Beatitudes give us a good indication of what the differences are. The Beatitudes are this. The object of Christ's Beatitudes when admitted to a human heart is to change it into moral beauty, transforming itself into transforming its selfishness, hardness, cruelty, and inhumanity to love, gentleness, kindness, and sweetness. These words of Christ are really transcripts of heaven's laws. These are the qualities that belong to the heavenly inhabitants. All life there is lowly, meek, merciful, hungry for more of God pure-hearted. This is what he's saying as he does the Beatitudes for the crowd on the mountaintop, that we need to be humble, merciful, meek, lowly, and hungry for more of God. There's a celebration that happens the night before All Saints Day, and that's called Halloween. It is related to All Saints Day. It is often called All Hallows Eve. What is a hallow? A hallow is a name for a saint. It's cinnamon, 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 cinnamon. Other than that, it would be sanctify, bless, consecrate, respect, dedication, revere, devotedness, 
glorified, magnified, and sanctified. There's a word in Celtic, which is called Samhain. It's a Gaelic word pronounced Samhain. It's actually how it's pronounced, but it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. It is usually celebrated on October 31st, the same day that we celebrate All Hallows' Eve. And of course, the next day is All Saints' Day, November 1st. To welcome in the harvest and to usher in the dark half of the year. The Celts like to usher in the dark half of the year, and every one of us in the Northern Hemisphere gets the dark half of the year. In fact, we even change times because of it, and I hope you change your, clock, your clocks today. And what it does is it is a time in which they get together, the Celts did, and they would put on scary masks and things like that so that it would help keep the evil spirits away for that darkness of the year when they are all alone in their houses because it's so cold outside. All Saints Day itself is celebrated by the churches. On May 1st, the Eastern Orthodox Church celebrates it. And on November 1st, it's the Roman Catholic, Protestant, Reformation churches, and those of the Methodist tradition that celebrate it. It used to be always celebrated on the same day, May 1st. But back in the 800, back in 800 AD, Pope Gregory changed it so that the Eastern Church celebrated it still on May 1st, and the Western Church, being the Roman Church, celebrated it on November 1st. Why do we celebrate this in such a special way? What does it really mean? Well, it has to do a lot with the communion of saints. Oftentimes, when you have your Holy Communion, you hear about the communion of saints. The oneness of the church is brought together with Holy Communion. And what it does is that when we have Holy Communion in the church, it is believed and actually spoken of in the Bible that all saints at the same time are having communion at the same time. This would be the people who are in heaven, those, as Paul calls them, the ones who have gone to sleep. If we remember during the time of the crucifixion, there's one verse that really sticks out when we're talking about the saints. Matthew 27, 52. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised to life. There are many verses in the Bible that talk about the saints, and different things about the saints. I just want to hit on just a couple of them here. Ephesians 2, 19 says this, so then, you, meaning you and I, and everyone listening to this, all people who are believers in Jesus Christ, says, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. So we are all together. We are all saints together who are believers in our heart, in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and what he did for us on the cross which was to take the penalty for any sin that we had on himself. Ephesians 4.11 says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. That's what God did. He gave us all those people, teachers, evangelists, prophets, to help us to learn along the way about what we are supposed to do as believers in Jesus Christ. Not everybody does it, and that's sad, but everybody has an own, their own gift and can do their own thing. I'm going to move on now and just finish this up. The Beatitudes. In one of God's tales, he tells of a wonderful silver lamp which had been placed in a fisherman's hut. It changed the hut and all that was in it into silver. The object of Christ's Beatitudes when admitted 
to a human heart is to change it into moral beauty, transforming its selfishness, hardness, cruelty, and inhumanity into love, gentleness, kindness, sweetness, and ministry. These words of Christ are really transcripts of heaven's law. These are the qualities that belong to heavenly inhabitants. All life there is in all life there is lowly, meek, merciful, hung, hungry for more of God. Pure heartedness. All the people who are inhabitants of heaven waiting for Jesus to come back here and pick up the rest of us who are believers in Jesus Christ. Live that type of life, humble, lowly, meek, merciful, hungering for more of God, wanting Him to speak to their hearts, singing praise to Him, and loving every minute of Him. And each and every one of us here should follow that same example and get it in practice for doing it. There is nothing wrong with our sin, and the reason I say that is because Christ took it to the cross for each and every one of us. We are not guilty. God bless you all. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms what a blessedness what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms Leaning, leaning Leaning on the everlasting
with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting
minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority I therefore declare the entire forgiveness of all our sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy.